Mitch Evans. I want to talk Mitch Evans because obviously you spoke to Mitch Evans Friday. He was angry, yeah. right? Talk to us about that. Obviously, he was angry with Vern, being squeezed into the wall, and his last gas defensive action. I did watch it again, and I was like, okay, I can kind of see a little bit what you mean, but I, f- I just, I don't know. I don't know what what was Mitch like. Mitch was very unhappy. Um, yeah, he, he wasn't happy, and I actually think rightly so. If it, you know, the Deerier attack mode. It, it's asking for those kind of instances. We've seen, you know, very similar happen before. When I spoke to Mitch, he was very much saying how the drivers have almost a bit of a code where, you know, the driver that's exiting the attack mode because it's on the racing line, they get the right of way, basically. And it's the person who's on the inside, which in this case was Jev, has to back off. You know, and that's always been the case. Jev's not the kind of driver who's going to back off when he's fighting for podiums, something he's rarely did last season. So, the FRC, it was noted, it wasn't really looked at. I think it probably should have been a penalty. You know, there's no doubting Mitch was pushed into the wall. Um, however, when he then asked Jeff, he said that Mitch should have given him a bit more room. Which I don't quite get how when Mitch had nowhere else to go. So, you know, Mitch was blaming Jeff, Jeff was blaming Mitch. For me, I think it probably should have been a penalty. Um, but, you know, there was contact made and how Mitch didn't get damaged, I think, is a miracle. And then in terms of on the last lap, you, you know, it, you could see he moved, you know, Jeff moves, moves twice under braking. You just can't do that. And, you know, I, I think the FI, they were a bit off the ball. You know, they, they've messed up the lap counts. I, I think they should have at least investigated the incident. You know, the one with Jeff at the end wasn't even noted. You know, there was yeah, nothing. nothing. You know, had it, you know, Mitch was saying how, you know, even if Jeff hadn't, you know, moved twice, you know, Mitch was going to go wide regardless. However, what would have happened is, he would have then simply rejoined behind Jeff like he did a bit earlier uh, with, with Jake. So, you know, as I said, he, he was out of control and pushed more into the dirty side of the track. So it's, he's he wanted a win. And if he'd got past Jeff with the attack mode, Mitch would have won. His pace was better than Jake. He was so quick. Um, the reason why he then struggled so much on the Saturday, and I can't say too much yet, um, something was fitted to his car which shouldn't have been. Okay. And something quite serious. He didn't go into details. What basically that is what caused him to struggle in qualifying, and then to have a poor race. So it, it's frustrating for him, obviously, because Nick's doing so well. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not buying the whole, and I, I think you know, I'm not buying the whole rivalry, the whole feud. I don't think. I think it's only because you know we know this because you know we, we speak to them quite yeah. a lot. They're best friends. Yeah. You know, they are really, really good mates. You know, and they were congratulating. You know, Mitch was full of you know speaking really highly. Of Nick all weekend, you know, there's not, I, there's not gonna be, yeah, of course they might come together or something. They might have a bit of a feud, but they're not gonna be like Lewis and Max. Yeah, or Lewis that's and Nico. Not, that, yeah, that, that, that's not gonna, yeah, well, yeah, that's better one they go, but that's that's not gonna happen. So, Mitch is still gonna be a top contender. He's got the pace. He would be higher up, but actually, you know, he didn't have good starts to the season last year. He's actually started this season better, so he's making progress. With yeah. um, with the uh, Mitch and Jeff, um, and the instance there. And I'm not sure if you guys can remember because my my memory is a little bit faulty. But I'm trying to think back to Puebla when we did the one time that we didn't go to Mexico City, and the attack mode was uh, on like another part of the circuit, and it read yes. You know that Bird was put in. I think Bird was put in the wall. It was, uh, but I can't think who did it though. Uh, I can't, yeah, I can't remember who did it or whether they got a penalty, but that's where my head was sort of going with. What was happening? I think mean, the, the thing, the uh, example, the example, the example Mitch gave in regards to the first incident with Jeb is how you look at last season and Mitch had an incident with Rene Rast, and Mitch didn't actually get. I think they just had to come in together at the same corner. Mitch didn't get the position, but he still got a five-second time penalty, and that was less than what happened with Jeb. You know, with Jeb, it was noted, and then it was then you know ignored you know it, it really wasn't looked at so i think and he went as far as saying that he's never had trust in the uh in the stewards so that's yeah that's but a, a lot it, a lot it, of formula e drivers have not had trust in the in the stewards that's unfortunately come up yeah which is unfortunately and i've seen it's in a way it's actually a bit of a growing issue now because the lap count is just not right it wasn't right in mexico you know do you it, think they'll fix that right. do you think they'll fix that for sao paulo yeah do you think we'll fix that? I, I asked i asked pascal is, is there anything that you guys can do to you know, can you say to them that we need more laps because to improve the racing? 
and Pascal, you know, whilst they can't tell them what to do, they can they you know they advise. They can advise. I, I, they're going to change. I, I think we'll see again. We'll see what happens in Sao Paulo. It, it's interesting that it's not only the laps they're reducing, but also the amount of um, power available. Um, the energy available. So it, it's interesting that it's. I, I don't quite know what they're doing. I think again, it's too early to really judge because Mexico and Deria aren't tracks born for incredible racing, because that's just not the circuit characteristics. Let's, like I said, you know, similar with Nissan. Let's see what happens in Sao Paulo. Let's all yep. stay calm for the next seven weeks. It's going to be forever, but it's fine. We can <laughs> we can overcome it. And if it's bad in Sao Paulo, then we can panic. But it's at least we've then got Tokyo to look forward to.